So Allah says, Kabura ala al mushrikeen ma tad'uhum ilayhi. It is a huge, it's a big deal on the mushrikeen what you're calling them to. The people of shirk, they cannot stand Islam becoming more established. Little or lot, doesn't matter. They can't stand any of it. They will hate you. And guess what? When Allah was talking to the Messenger وسلم, at this time, who was in power? Who controlled the media at the time, the politics at the time, the society at the time, the currency at the time? Who controlled all of it? Quraysh. Everybody listened to the Quraysh. And they are your toughest customer. Allah says they don't want what you have to sell. Kabura ala al-mushrikeen ma tad'uhum ilayhi. It's a really big deal for them what you're calling them to. In other words, when we are starting our effort, Allah is telling us from the very beginning, you have huge challenges in front of you, doesn't matter though. Doesn't matter. You don't look at the challenges and say, oh, it's, this is too hard. Look, look at all the forces against us. Brother, you don't know. They have so much money they spend on propaganda and this and that. Yes, they have it. Allah already told us, Kabura ala al-mushrikeen ma tad'uhum ilayhi. Okay, they have what they have. We have Allah on our side. That's it. That's enough for us. What is, and then the Muslim thinks, what is my little effort going to, what change is it going to bring? Frustrated Muslims, when they see the chaos around the Muslim world, they say, what, whatever little effort I do to help out, whatever little work of da'wah we're doing, how is it going to help? What difference is it going to make? The difference that it makes is not up to you and me, that's up to Allah. He didn't, if you, if you ask, and I, I say this all the time, I'll, I'll repeat it, if you ask Nuh salam, show me a progress report at the end of the year. Let's see how many, how many Muslims, you know, how many people became Muslim, what's your progress, let's see some charts. What's your progress in the last 10 years? Well, one guy almost became Muslim, but... Uh, okay, we'll have another convention in 10 years, get your progress report. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 100 years, oh, three guys became Muslim. If you're gauging progress, if you, if you want to see, you know, he's putting work in, he's establishing a lazim, but he's not seeing results, is he? Now we don't see results, we say, what's the point? Nuh never says, I don't see any results, what's the point? He keeps going and going and going and going, subhanAllah. We're supposed to have that attitude. The Sahaba aren't supposed to say, well, you know, when, when's Hijrah coming? It's been like eight years now. Let's do this already. Let's build in Masjid al-Nabawi and get this party started. No, no, no. Now, they're not told when it's coming. They're just told, wasbiru. Just be patient, keep doing what you're doing. Stay on course. So we cannot become, and you know, and actually in Surah Al-Ankabut, a Sahabi, Khabab bin Arad, who was burnt, he was burnt alive, he was put on coal, his back melted. And he came to the Messenger and he said, you know, when's the help of Allah coming? How long are we going to keep, keep this up? They're going to keep torturing us like this? And you can imagine when a person is literally tortured like that, they're going to speak emotionally. And the ayat came down. Yasta'ajilunak. They're rushing you. They're rushing you. They don't have patience. You know, subhanAllah, Surah Al-Ankabut came down. And even told the Muslims, أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون People have assumed that they're going to be left alone just by saying that they believe they're not going to be tested. That's all part of the test. So we have to have real long-term thinking and we have to be convinced when we join an Islamic effort, any Islamic effort, we have to be convinced that positive change will not come from our efforts. We have to put in the best effort because Allah told us to, not because of results. I have to do my best because Allah told me to do my best. Results will only come from Allah. And by the way, there's a formula from Allah Azza wa Jal. Results come when we truly believe they come from Allah. When we start relying on ourselves, that's when Allah says, oh you think you can do this, and He pulls away. And you don't see results, all you see is fitna then. Kabura ala al mushrikeena ma tad'uhum ilayhi. Now the messenger is told this. Now you, you can imagine, and I want to end with this, inshallah, at least finish this ayah today. A very beautiful thing. The Prophet والسلام, wants nothing more than for the mushrikun to become Muslim. He's so worried about them. He wants them to become Muslim. And maybe sometimes some sahaba might say they're never going to become Muslim. Look at them, they're never going to change. The mushrikun might say, we're never going to change, it's too hard for us. But when he hears that from Allah, Allah says to him, it's too big a deal for them, they're not going to be. ala mushrikina, ma tad'uhum ilayhi. Isn't it lose, reason to become hopeless? Like even Allah is saying they're not going to become Muslim, it's too big for them. But all the messenger is told to do is invite, 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 and Allah Himself is saying it's too hard for them to accept the invitation. SubhanAllah. Now at this point he might say, well, what's the point then? If it's so hard for them. Allah says, Allah, in the same ayah, Allah hu yajtabi ilayhi. Man yasha. Kayfa yukmil al kalam, subhanallah. He says, Allah chooses towards him, calls towards him, 
drafts towards him whoever he wants. That's not up to you. I know it's hard on them to accept. But even if it's hard on them, I will still bring, bring out of them to Islam. I'll bring some of their toughest warriors and some of their toughest haters of Islam. I'll bring the Umars and the Khalid ibn Walids. I'll bring them to Islam. Allahu yajtabi ilayhi man yasha'u wa yahdi ilayhi man yunibu. And you'll guide towards him whoever turns towards him. That's not up to you. That's my job. That's my job. What you're calling them to definitely is hard for them. And it's not easy for them to accept. But that doesn't mean Allah will not soften some hearts and pull some hearts towards Him. But that's up to Allah, not up to you. We're learning something huge here. Brother, we put a program together, nobody showed up. Only five people showed up. It was such a failure. The whole program was a failure. Five people. We put this whole program together. We threw out, threw out flyers, we made announcements. You know, we stuck things in people's cars. We harassed people. We sent text messages that everybody hated. We flooded people's Facebook pages and five people showed up at our program. What a total failure. Actually, you made all that effort not for the numbers to attend a program. You made all that effort as an act of worship to Allah. So it's already success. It's already success. Whether if there's nobody in the hall, it's still a success. Because you just put work in for Allah. You tried to do something from Aqimuddin. You tried to do that. That was for Allah. No, no, nothing else should depress you. There's no reason for you to get depressed. Even the messenger is told, لا تحزن عليهم don't, don't grieve over them. Don't worry about them. You just do your job. You just keep reminding. Your job is just to remind. The kinds of things he has to hear and he just he has this attitude, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what these people say. I just have to do my job. That's what Allah is telling you. This is the mentality of a worker for Islam. No matter what capacity, whether even you're a volunteer that helps put the tables together, or helps vacuum the masjid before Jumu'ah, whatever capacity you help in, your mentality is, whatever I'm doing, first of all, is worthy to Allah. It's worth something. And I brought up the guy who vacuums the masjid on purpose. There was this old woman that used to sweep al-masjid al-nabawi. Radiallahu anha. Nobody knew her name. Nobody knew her name. And when one day she, she mysteriously disappeared and word got out that she died. And the Prophet was asking about her, where'd she go? Where'd she go? And he cried for her. Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he made dua for her and he praised her. That, that no, nobody attended her halaqat. She didn't do any gl glorious work. Nobody even knew her name. People didn't even know her name. And she is so successful that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam misses her presence. And he makes dua for her. Never think that what you're doing for deen is less. Oh, so you're not the president of the organization? Then what's the point then? I'm just a volunteer. I'm just the secretary of the MSA. What's that? That's nothing. Just think of that lady that swept the masjid. Just think of that. We're not here to gain t ranks in organizations. We are here to serve deen. We're here to serve Allah Azza wa Jalla. We're not like Iblis. If he doesn't get a rank, he gets upset. You know? We're not like that. We don't care about ranks and organizations. They're just titles. They will come and they will go. Who's the, who's the president of the masjid? Who's the imam? Who's the president of the MSA? Who's the head of this program? Who's in charge of this? Who's the main speaker? Who's the second speaker? You know, who's the MC? None of this stuff matters. None of this stuff matters. At the end of the day, if we're all sincerely serving Allah, the guy standing behind the microphone, and the guy sitting on, you know, and, and doing work, and helping put the program together, you don't even know who Allah is rewarding them more. more. You know, you, sometimes you have an Islamic convention and there's like, you know, thousands of people coming to listen to a speaker and everything's, MashaAllah, the speaker did such a great job. The speaker didn't do anything. He got flown in, he stayed in a hotel, and he talked for 20 minutes. He didn't do anything. You know who did all the work? Those guys that you just push over when to get into the hall. They're the ones who stayed up all night. They're the ones who booked, you know, made sure of all the arrangements that would happen. Nobody even cared, nobody even knows their name. Nobody knows. You know, they don't come up on stage and say, by the way, you're welcome. They don't do that. But Allah recognizes them. Allah Azza wa recognizes them. And that's enough. That's enough for them. This is the attitude of a worker of deen. May Allah Azza wa make us of those who work towards establishing Allah's deen in whatever capacity.